G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name's Jonathan. So today you are going to learn how to import stock data using Python. We're going to be using Jupyter Labs. We're going to be able to plot the data, um, define a date range, define the stocks that we're interested in and get that information into Python. So let's jump straight in. So as I've said, we're going to start with um, using Jupyter Labs from now on. So pip install Jupyter Lab if you don't have it. This will pop up in your Google Chrome or whatever extension you're using. So here we can use Jupyter Lab to do inline uh, Python and continue on down the page. Really good for um, development. So the module that we're going to use to import financial data is called Pandas Data Reader. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, that's okay. Um, essentially, it's got access to all these different types of uh, data files, including Yahoo Finance data, which is what we're gonna be using today. Um, there are plenty of other different packages out there, um, different sources of financial data. Here, here's a complete list that you're given. Um, the reason we're gonna be using Pandas Data Frame is that it gets it into a Pandas data structure, um, which is going to make it easy for then doing financial analysis. So Pandas Data Reader, great resource. Pip install it if you don't have it already. So let's import our dependencies. We're gonna need date time as DT. We're going to import pandas as PD. And we're going to go from Pandas Data Reader, Data Reader. Um, we're going to import data as PDR, so short for Pandas Data Reader C, and we can just execute that by holding down Shift, Enter, and we're doing inline Python. So now we have to specify a date range for the analysis, so we're gonna create a start and end date. So we can use date time for this, so let's specify the end date first. So let's make the end date today. So we go dt.datetime.now, and for the start time, all we need to do is go dt. We can use um, time delta, and we're going to specify the amount of days um, as 5,000. So let's go from the end minus 5,000 days. So let's just return start and end to see what they are. So we can see that we've got our analysis here from 2007 all the way through to 2021. Now, alternatively, you could just specify the start date as a date time. Let's say we wanted information from the year 2000. So now we've got data from the year 2000 all the way through to today. So for the second step, we're going to select the stocks um, and tickers we want to analyze. Important to know for Australian stocks, we need to add .ax at the end of it. So knowing that structure um, is very important and the way you can work out what stocks you're interested in today is you go here, type in what you're interested in and uh, find out the format of that ticker. So here I've got Commonwealth Bank and it's cba.ax. I know that all Australian stocks end in .ax. So going back here, we can now make a stock list of the list of stocks we're interested in. Today I'm going to just do the four major banks in Australia, um, NAB, uh, Westpac, and ANZ. Now to get it in, uh, to get, I'm gonna use list comprehension um, to add that .ax to the end of it for I in stock list. And let's just return those stocks. Excellent, so these are the stocks that we're interested in. Now we're going to use the pandas data reader module um, and you can call it in two ways. We can go pdr.datareader stocks and list Yahoo, or we can um, just directly call get data Yahoo stocks uh, start end. So we might use that second one. Um, so what we're gonna do is 
just copy and paste that. PDR, get data, stock, start and end date. And we might put that into a variable df. So we're gonna call the data frame df and we will go dot head to return the first couple of rows of that data frame. So as you can see there, pretty messy. So we've got all these different uh, columns and the indices um, for those different stocks, but right now it's pretty hard to decipher. So a way of understanding the pandas data frame structure, a good way is to just call df.index. So we can check what the index is composed of and I can see here that it's just a whole bunch of date time stamps um, between my date ranges specified. And the other one that's very useful is to see what the columns are. Now, this is why it looks so complicated up there. It's a multi-index from two attributes, well, two names, attributes and symbols. So we can see here that it's selectable on symbols and then the actual attribute type. So let's talk about accessing these useful attributes. So let's assume that we want to get access to the close data. So let's specify a subset of this data, uh, close, as df.close. Now we can call the head of that pandas data frame and see that the symbols, organized by symbols, and uh, simply the date range there is the index. So we've, we've subsectioned this data, so it's <laughs> much more readable. Now let's gain quick insight into um, the data. And a way we can do this is with pandas describe method. So describe is a set function, set method um, for pandas data frames. Um, essentially it's just generating descriptive statistics and it's easy to get the mean standard deviation, min and max between that date range and the percentiles. Interestingly, if you change this um, percentile here, you can specify, let's say, the 10th percentile, um, the median, and then the 90th percentile instead, and you can return them. So pretty flexible. So we might want to subsection this data. We might want to know the um, statistics of the stocks for the last, let's say, 100 days. So what we can do is subsection this data again, and we're going to go close dot index is greater than index is greater than. Um, remember, end was our end date minus dt dot time delta days equal 100. So let's say the last 100 days, and we can subsection that data. Important to note that if we use time delta and we say let's go 100 days from where we are now, that's not going to be 100 trading days. We've only had 68 trading days in the last 100 days. So, you know, accounting for weekends, public holidays, that kind of stuff, you need to return. Um, it's, yeah, quite handy to, to count the amount of rows, the amount of information that you get back here. Um, so very useful. Uh, getting into the last section, uh, we're going to talk about plotting with pandas data frames plotting with matplotlib versus plotly. So first off, it's pretty interesting to note how easy it is to plot with pandas data frame. Simply going close.plot, um, you can plot your graph here. It's automatically taking in all the columns and all the information and plotting them all on one graph. Now you might wanna change the fig size. Um, there's heaps of attributes that you could change, but it's, it's really configurable. Unfortunately, there's no hover over data information here. Matplotlib, um, it's, it's, it's really good for quick stuff, but um, when you're talking about making an online applications or being able to get access to the data through online dashboards, probably not the best choice. And that's why here we're going to introduce Plotly. Um, Plotly is a great alternative. It is used in the back end of, um, of .pandas.plot. So that's what we're gonna change now. So let's talk about installing Plotly. Um, there is help documentation for this, especially with the Jupyter Lab Plotly extension. 
Um, people all, you, you will have a problem downloading this at the start, but there's two steps. Pip install Plotly and then run Jupyter Lab extension, install Jupyter Lab Plotly. So just run those two things and if, it, and if you're having trouble from there and can't work it out, then go through to this um, Plotly Python get started link. So uh, let's uh, import the necessary modules. So we're going to import plotly.offline and we're going to import that as PYO. So we're going to now call, to use it in uh, Jupyter Labs, we're going to go py.o initialize notebook mode connected equals true. Now this is this is essential to be able to actually plot plotly graphs within Jupyter itself. Um, the other thing we need to set is the pandas options um, plotting backend and we're going to change that from matplotlib to plotly. I'm going to run that and now let's run the exact same function as we did above, close.plot. And you can see here, we now have an interactive graph. So much nicer format. There is a whole bunch of different configuration that you can do with Plotly. And the, again, the reason I'm bringing it up here is because I'd like to do a series with Dash. So making online applications um, with Python using Plotly and um, Chart Studio. So yeah, it, it is very interesting. To show you some of that configuration quite quickly now, let's subsection that closed data. Um, let's say that we're interested in CBA specifically, and we want to know the distribution around percent changes. So we can call we can call this series CBA, and we want to get the percent change changes, and uh, we want to be able to plot maybe a histogram of these percent changes. So plotting the histogram, we just need to go kind equals hist. And you can already see how nice of a graph um, we can achieve through Plotly. So I hope you learned a lot today. Um, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to be following on this tutorial into more depth um, Python for finance tutorials. So. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.